So I'm going to kick us off with a song that's called uh, We Are the Harvest. It's by uh, Jamie Lula, and it's just sound. So I'm going to just play the audio for us. And... Here we go. Can everybody hear it? Yeah. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the love that we seek. We are the seeds we are sowing. We are the harvest we reap. Oh, we are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the love that we seek. We are the seeds we are sowing. We are the harvest we reap. Oh, I am. The seeds we are sowing, we are the harvest we reap. Oh, I am, and I am. Oh, I am, and I am. I am, and I am. We are sowing, we are the harvest we reap. Oh, we are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the love that we seek. We are the seeds we are sowing. We are the harvest we reap. We are the harvest we reap. We are the harvest we reap. Uh, that seemed appropriate for fall. Talk about the harvest, that we are the harvest we reap. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, sweetheart. Uh, I just want to introduce Lisa as our practitioner of the day. Yes, and I want to wish everybody also a happy International Peace Day, which I find very appropriate in terms of the context of what we are celebrating this month and specifically today. And so, um, and that song was just perfect in terms of where my mind went when I began thinking about um, this imagining peace. And it's like, the first thing that came to my mind was that was that song of um, uh, uh, <laughs> let peace begin with me, essentially. The, it, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. And and I think that that, that is essentially the um command if you will from from our spiritual self and the fact that it's so easy to become tangled up in all of the reasons that we are seeing that we in in the our 3d world we see no peace but really peace is always present because peace is is one of the attributes of god like love and all the other things and so peace is always always present and it's it's human choices that create the disarray. And so therefore, it is human choices for spirit and peace that can can fix it, can correct it, can create a new a new world, which is kind of what our whole our whole practice is based on. And and um, I yesterday I was listening to the spiritual centers had a um, podcast or or something, a Zoom call. 
that was put on by the uh, Committee for Diversity, Inclusion and Equity. And it was a fascinating conversation. I, I, I had forgotten it, so I missed the first 20 minutes, but the rest of it was fabulous too. Just hearing from other people and and on this same topic and i there, there were just a couple of things from that that i that i wanted to be sure to share with you um oh um well they also talked about that the whole well i know what it was it was the, the talking about gaza and the fact putting this in context of family it's like a part of dealing with peace as an individual you begin with yourself and then you kind of move into the family and the family is a good place to where you start determining what are you going to choose peace peace or division and the one gentleman who from a muslim perspective said that that it like a family it is it is the the family of of Isaac versus the family of Ishmael. And that just, it's like, that's the Muslim Jewish conflict. And so anyway, just that, that example, um, when you begin to expand that into your own life, it's like in relationship to your personal relationships and your family relationships and how that's such a mirror for, for the world. And so what are you going to focus on? You're going to focus on the division. You're going to focus on all the stuff that's going on and it's horrendous and people dying and, and all the rest and make judgments about that. Or are you going to move higher? Are you going to move into personal practice and, and, and spiritual mind treatment? And that's the other thing. This is sort of a segue in terms of where my mind goes, but it's like people are always talking about prayer. You pray, you pray. But I think that by using spiritual mind treatment and praying in that way, you are imagining what you want. You are you uniting with, with spirit in terms of the ultimate positive. And so that that's why I feel like um, spiritual mind treatment that is sort of our core principle is so great for that. Um, Okay, I think that's basically it. And then also like in meditation, I think is where also we find for each one of us how spirit wishes our work for peace to emerge. And for some people, it may be action in the world. And for others, it may simply be spiritual mind treatment. And so anyway, that that it's like our practices provide the possibility for each one of us to be a beacon for peace in the world. And so from there, I want to go into treatment from here, into, I mean, into our invocation. So uh, knowing that there is one source of all and there is never, never an absence, let us join together to celebrate our oneness with that source and let us feel the comfort in knowing that we are unique expressions of that source and unique expression of peace, which is that source. And so I know I'm speaking my word for the experience of peace in each and every person. And I know that it flows through every person and simply needs to be acknowledged and seen and brought into consciousness so that it can be embodied. And so I know it flows through each and every person with great support to and that the divine flows into us and through us into the world. And we have the, the ability to make the choices and actions and thoughts that move the spirit and, and expression and manifestation of peace into the world. And I know that this is so, I know that this is done through the law and I'm so grateful to know that is the truth. And I'm so grateful to have these practices as a part of my life, <laughs> excuse me, and have this community to celebrate these practices with me. And so I release my word into the law by saying, and so it is. And our affirmation, we can say together, the power of the universe is within me. It is the power of love. I know it, I feel it, 
I live it in my life. My humanity is born from my divinity. I am blessed and grateful. And so it is. Oh, thank you, Lisa. Thank you. That was beautiful. I just loved everything you had to say. Thank you. I particularly loved when you said, because this is like really what I'm going to be speaking to today, that it's the going in and hearing with your heart and with your being how spirit wants to express whatever quality it is. And we're talking about peace today, peace through you. It's, that was beautiful. Loved it. Loved it. Thank you, sweetheart. And yeah. um, I, when I first realized that we were talking about peace and that it is International Peace Day, I had forgotten until you reminded us, but I do remember now. And um, of course, we've been talking about peace all month. I thought of this song and then I thought, well, it's a little slow, but you know what? I don't care. <laughs> it, it, it perfectly expresses what I would like to, to really talk about today. So we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and play and. And this is um, this is uh, Faith Rivera and her beautiful song. Um, sorry, I'm trying to multitask here. Her beautiful song, Peace Today. So I'm going to play that for us. Oh, 
she just has the most beautiful voice and the lyrics were just are just so inspiring so i hope you enjoy that and that is what we're talking about this morning we're talking about can you not hear no i was waving i'm sorry uh, I was waving to Relaine. Oh, Relaine. Hello, <laughs> Relaine. Good to see you. Oh, so here we are. Happy autumn. Good morning, one heart, one mind, center for spiritual living. And as always, I love to say this because it's always true. I don't want to leave anybody out. If you're joining us in real time or replay, I'm just so glad you're here. So welcome, everyone. And, you know, also, as always, I've been saying this the last few weeks because I really feel it in my heart. It is my intention that you hear or feel or experience something in this Sunday service that uplifts and benefits your life in some way by, by deepening your connection to the presence of the divine that's already within you. So I, I, I just want to want to express that intention to you. It's so heartfelt for me. You know, a few years ago, we were talking about this at our board meeting, a few years ago, the leadership of One Heart, One Mind put together this visual symbol of our intention for our center. It was kind of a very unconventional mission statement for our center, if you will. It's in the form of a cairn, which is a stack of balanced stones that support each other. And cairn comes from the old Scottish Gaelic word. And originally cairns were used as memorials or, or burial markers. And then in more modern times, they started uh, becoming used as landmarks and trail markers. And we've used them for our center as a reminder of the spiritual principles and, and the qualities of the divine that our center stands on, that we're, we're balanced on. If you've ever received the, the weekly newsletter, you've seen our cairn. It's that stack of rocks that has one heart, one mind on it. But I just thought I'd take a moment because I think it's good to just pause and remind ourselves what the vision and the intention for our center is. So I'm gonna show I'm going to show our cairn here. You see, it's actually it pops up on the screen when I when I turn off my video. But I'm gonna I've got a picture of it. Let me share it with you so we can take a look at it together. I'll get there. <laughs> All right. Let's see where is it? There it is. Okay, I know you've seen it, and here it is. Here is our cairn. So, uh. It's it's really quite lovely. So um, our cairn, I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see it, because the writing is kind of small, but you can see that each stone has has a quality of the divine or a spiritual practice or something on it. And the reeds themselves say openness and sacred service, which are also part of our um, part of our intention for our center to be in sacred service and to be open to everyone and everything. And you'll notice that right at the very bottom, it says connection. And that is one of our, our real strong primary principles. I'm reminding us that that our connection to the divine is, is our primary relationship. But, you know, it's also that divine is within us and the divine that is in and through as creation itself, everywhere present. And then um, let's see what else you can see directly on top of that. It says science or spiritual mind treatment and science of mind principles. Spiritual, spiritual mind treatment is really our foundational spiritual practice. And, and um, I think it's just brilliant because it really, spiritual mind treatment weaves into it all of the basic spiritual practices or not practices, but principles that we stand on in the science of mind philosophy. It just kind of integrates all of those spiritual principles into that one spiritual tool. And it's a fantastic the spiritual tool for us as metaphysicians um, because it's so inclusive. It's got everything in there. And then you can see there's also other things that it says, like education, inclusion, abundance, 
and sitting right up at the very, very tippy top, you can see it, it says joy. It's sort of the culmination of it all in that we want to feel and experience a joyous life. And if you look really closely, I want to make sure that we see this one too. You'll notice that just under the big stone that says inclusion is one that says spiritual practice. It's a big word on a very little stone, so it's kind of hard to see, but it's there. But, um, you know, I just wanted to bring to our attention that while we have spiritual practices that are specific to the science of mind, we aren't limited only to the practices that science of mind teaches. We also incorporate spiritual practices that come from many other sources. However, they also stand on and expand the very basic spiritual principles that we teach and believe and live our lives by in the science of mind philosophy. So let me just give you a quick example. You know, I often use um, a technique called EFT or emotional freedom technique, also known as tapping. And I use this as a tool, as a way of calming my mind and my body so that I can release any tension or worry or fear, or whatever I might be holding uh, knowingly or unknowingly that might be standing in my way for a deeper connection to spirit. And I use that often just before I go into my meditation and, and spiritual mind treatment work because it really does kind of clear the way. It isn't a particularly a tool that science of mind specifically teaches, but it certainly is in, in tandem with all of the basic principles that we teach. And there are many others. I could go on and on. But okay, I'm gonna stop sharing our, our uh, cairn. Here, I love that word. <laughs> there we go. Oh, and so, um, you know, I just wanted to remind us that Ernest Holmes, our founder, said when, when he was presenting, let's put it this way, when he was presenting his philosophy of what he called the science of mind and spirit, he, he didn't claim to have discovered any new truth. Truth, he said, has been known in every age. But historically, it's really only been known by a few that, that have been exposed to a larger perspective of truth, of life. I think that intuitively we kind of know that. But, you know, in for most of the time, you know, the masses were really just exposed to, okay, well, this physical reality is truth. And um, in today's world, more and more people are realizing and recognizing that we live in a world that is both physical and spiritual, and they're just woven together, one sourcing the other. And according to Holmes, the science of mind philosophy is an attempt by him to put into the spoken word some of these great truths, truths that are timeless and constant and empowering so that we can consciously participate with life. And, and Holmes also, and famously, as I'm sure, I'm sure you know, told us to remain open at the top. He knew and he understood that, that life continues to expand. What, what, this isn't a direct quote, but um, he said that nature will only let us stay in one place long enough to gather the necessary experience for the, and I love this, the unfoldment and the advancement of our souls. You know, Holmes knew that our, our human capacity for embodying more and more truth would continue to expand and that our spiritual practices would, would have to be refined and redesigned to align with these with this expansion. And while our spiritual practices have fundamentally stayed the same based on the same powerful spiritual principles, unchangeable and constant, if you're anything like me, and you probably are, you're always looking for some new way to use these basic spiritual practices in a deeper and more personal way. I always want to make my spiritual practice personal, so personal just to me. So I'm always looking for new, we could call them tweaks to put into my practice, which, which you know, so I can use these timeless unchangeable, constant, universal principles that I stand so firmly on as the foundation of my life. 
you know, and I've, I've certainly learned through my seems like constant and ceaseless exploration, new ways to align more fully with the spiritual truths of my being and, and the spiritual truths of life itself. And, th and that's really what I want to focus on this morning. I kind of came at that a with a, a long way around the barn, I guess. But um, the talk title this morning is, uh, Lisa said, is Imagine Peace. And this feels really like an invitation to me, an invitation to go deeper than just thinking about peace, but to go into the felt experience of peace or the frequency of peace. But, you know, individually first, but also as a collective human experience, you know, and I think we're ready for that, for peace, not only as an idea, but as an experience, a way of being and living and as I'm sure you know, because I keep telling you, <laughs> I am really becoming more and more aware that the language of the universe is not only ideas expressed as our words, which certainly have a power and a frequency of their own. I'm not negating that at all, but that the language of the universe is feeling and frequency and that our ideas and our belief and our words spark those feelings and help us to resonate at those higher frequencies. They spark the resonance of what we're speaking. You know, Holmes wrote, um, oh, I, I wrote it down. I don't want to mess this up because it's a good quote. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it here. Oh, you'd think I'd have these at the ready. So Holmes wrote this, I, you know, I'm always looking to see if I can find words of wisdom that he spoke to really um, support the ideas that I present to you. So he wrote, our mental acceptances should be filled with conviction, warmth, color, and imagination. I'm going to say that again. Our mental acceptances, you know, what we believe, should be filled with conviction and warmth and color and imagination. The creative power responds to feeling, and here's the important thing, the creative power responds to feeling more quickly than to uh, any other mental attitude. Therefore, we should try to feel the reality of what we are doing when we give a treatment or an affirmative prayer, when we're doing our spiritual practice. In other words, the deeper we feel and embody the quality of God behind our words, our prayer, the more we demonstrate our good. And this is true both individually and, and true and magnified when done collectively. The more people who embody, who feel and experience peace within themselves, the more it contributes to the collective consciousness of humanity. Each of our, each of our contributions matters and, and our contributions are powerful. I never want us to think that what we're thinking into the collective whole isn't powerful and impactful. You know, we could put it like this. Let's, let's put it like this. If we want to demonstrate peace in our lives or any other quality of the God, of God, of the divine, but right now let's focus on peace. It has to become a sacred encounter, a real connection, a sacred encounter within us. We have to have an idea of peace, a vision of peace, a complete embodiment of peace, an alignment with the peace of God. You know, think of it this way. If you want to build a house before you do anything, you build the house in your mind first. You, you, you have the idea of a house. You have, uh, you have the idea of, 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 and the frequency and the vibration, and you imagine your house in your mind. You know, you see the walls going up, the plumbing and the electricity going in. You see a vision of, of your house in your mind, and you imagine living in the house, enjoying the house, and all the wonderful things that you're going to do in your house. The house comes alive for you. And the same is true for anything else we want to demonstrate in our lives. We begin with the idea and the quality or the frequency in back of it. You know, so think of it like this. The frequency in back of music is harmony. The frequency in back of a flower is beauty. 
The idea or frequency in back of day is light. In back of supply, abundance, prosperity, I could go on. The first step in creation is to embody the idea and feel the truth in God in that quality. Experience the reality of it before it will ever mass manifest into, into physical form or experience. You know, this is the creative process. This is how God expresses through its creation, you know, underlying all of creation is the divine idea of life, of love, life expressed, love expressed through law, through law, law gets the job done. You know, and the basic spiritual principles that we practice in science of mind call us to that realization of our individualized consciousness within a larger universal consciousness. And, and we're all discovering it for ourselves, creating our own relationship with this larger life, the larger universal consciousness. And we're the ones, we're empowered to nurture and cultivate and expand this relationship to include all of the larger life because it's infinite and that is a lot of life. <laughs> You know, and and it is this this universal life that supplies and supports and lives through our individual lives, and as we deepen in the in the depth of our being to this call of life, I, I think Holmes called it the gentle urgings of life of the larger life. Then we start to become more aware of the divine in all things. You know, we move from our limited vision to the limitless vision or expansion, the, the larger view from the larger life. You know, we, we can live in both worlds. We can live in our, our humanity, but let it be driven and fed and sourced from our divinity. You know, we're just all on this amazing ride here. You know, it, it's an adventure and no one is excluded from it. Now, me or you or any saint or sinner or mystic that has ever lived. You know, the master teacher, Jesus said, said, peace I give to you. But but I don't give you the peace of the world. You know, he, he didn't tell us that he was giving us the peace that we could find in the world. I'm messing up that quote, but that's OK. You get the gist. You know, our part is to accept the gift of peace. It's already within us. It's already been given, you know, and again, we start with the idea of peace. We feel it. We embody it. We make it the frequency that we vibrate at with as we walk through our day. Because as long as we look to other people or conditions, I mean, look around at the world right now. If you're going to look for other people or other conditions to, to feel or create peace, yeah, you're not going to probably find it out there. We won't ever find that, that lasting, enduring peace that is that Jesus was talking about that comes from the peace of God, not from the world around us. You know, it's that peace that kind of wells up in us from within. And it, it really doesn't have any relationship to the conditions of our lives. It's a peace that is generated from within us. That's always there. There was this funny story. I thought this kind of embodied the idea of what I'm talking about, about a little girl. And she was sitting on the sofa and she had this big smile on her face. And, and her mom asked her what she was thinking about. And the little girl said, candy. <laughs> you know, so simple. You know, and, and I think as adults, we sometimes have a hard time doing that. You know, try thinking about candy, just candy. You know, after a few seconds, you know, if you're anything like me, you probably start thinking about cavities and the dentist and how am I going to pay for it and will it hurt? You know, you know I, I, and, uh, you know, it's so simple to just think one thought and resonate there. You know, and I really do think that one of the reasons that most of us come to a spiritual center like One Heart, One Mind is because 
we we hold a belief, a basic belief or an idea that peace and wholeness and abundance and prosperity, that these are our divine birthright, that we don't have to earn them or become something other than we already are. I think we come because we intuitively feel intuitively feel this and we're looking for like-minded people to help support this idea that Ernest Holmes told us that comes from that we have the seed perfection within us and that and that feeling that we kind of yearn to feel that and to discover new ways that we can bring it to life you know to germinate that seed perfection you know not only for our own good but for the good of the whole of humanity you know, it's who we are. We want to experience the peace that surpasses all understanding, as St. Paul told us. You know, that candy. <laughs> we want to think about candy. And we intuitively know that it's possible. I can feel that truth. Can you feel that truth? You know, peace and love and joy. They, they flow through our experience because because our experience flows from the consciousness of God that's within us and it flows through us and it throws through flows through our individualized consciousness. What's, I love that idea that we are um, individualizing the universe and that's it's so expansive. You know, we're empowered to personalize this loving presence that animates all life. That's pretty big. And, and we do it by personalizing creative law. You know, and Holmes told us that law becomes our law at the level that we use it. You know, so where do we want to use it? You know, and I truly believe that spirit intends for us to live in the fullness of life and the fullness of that larger life. And the key to living in the fullness of that larger life is through practicing and embodying truth. You know, we cultivate that sense of peace within ourselves which flows out into the world through our practice, we, practicing the presence and the power of the divine within us. Practice, practice, practice. You know, what's that old joke about how do you get to Carnegie Hall? You know, and I, and I was thinking, you know, there are mathematicians that have practiced and studied for so long that they can give the answer to a difficult question, a difficult math problem, excuse me, right off the top of their heads. They don't even have to use a calculator, you know? And if you watch people like the gymnast Simone Biles on the gym floor, or you listen to a musician like John Legend sing Glory, you know, you can see that they are so practiced in their craft. They know it so well that they can just open up and let spirit flow through them. They don't even have to worry about their craft. They're masters of their craft. And any master of any craft, you know, always has to go through a period of study and practice, whatever it is, music, sports, cooking, astrophysics, <laughs> any activity, a master must practice until it becomes such a part of them that it's who they are. And then they're free to just open up and let spirit flow. And we can do exactly the same thing when it comes to practicing, practicing the presence and becoming a point of expression for the divine to flow through, to become the peace of God, to become the love of God, the abundance of God. We can practice its resonance so often that it just becomes who we are. We can hang out in peace or any other quality of God so often that it just becomes a habitual state of being for us, you know, and, and that's what a spiritual life is built on. It's built on a fundamental understanding of God, the experience of God, the lived experience of God, and a life in which we embody the nature and the character of God and then participate with God's law. It sounds so simple when I say it out loud. Practice, practice, practice. You know, I remember not long ago, I, I told you that story about the accountant. This just, it just fill, fits in with the practice idea. Um, there was an accountant who worked at this small accounting firm for over 35 years. 
And every morning he would come to work and he would unlock his desk and he'd look at a little piece of paper in the upper left-hand drawer. He'd open it, he'd look at his drawer, and then he'd just stare out the window for a few minutes. And nobody ever knew exactly what he was doing. And then he passed away unexpectedly and they unlocked his desk and they found a single piece of paper in the drawer that read debit on the left, credit on the right. <laughs> so he was still doing practice, 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 because the more intimate our relationship becomes with our craft, it just becomes who we are. And the more intimate our relationship comes with the divine presence, the more we identify with that divine self and the more we can just let it flow naturally through our lives. You know, the spirit of good wants to flow and express through us. It's just the nature of life. You know, and I know we all have busy lives. We all have responsibilities and things we have to do every day, but we can always find time to pause during our day to connect with the presence, to feel, even if only for a few moments, the presence, the resonance of peace or love or joy. And it doesn't really have to interfere with any of our daily activities. It actually can enhance our daily activities. You know, we, we, you could be doing the dishes or mowing the lawn or whatever it is you do. and and at the same time, keep an open consciousness to the resonance of spirit's peace. You know, you can be walking out on the street or be in the grocery store or driving the car and still remember that the spirit of God is upon me, you know, and that that spirit is peace. And, and then we can offer it to anybody who comes into our orbit, anybody who comes in contact with us. You know, the idea is to live in the peace and the joy and the abundance and all of the other wonderful goodness that spirit intends for us, you know, to live and move and have our being in the divine presence. Hey, and believe me, I am not perfect at this, but I do continue to practice, practice, practice every dang day, <laughs> you know? Remember, this is your life. This is God expressing as you. How are you going to let God show up in your life today? You know, well, where will you put your attention? And, that, and how will that make you feel? How will you practice the basic spiritual principles of love and law today? Through prayer, meditation, study, affirmations, forgiveness and gratitude practices. It's up to us because when we practice spiritual truths, they become more than just theory. They become automatic. They become who we are. We begin to live in that expectancy of good. We begin to live in the frequency of peace. You know, what, what, did, what does the Bible say? To pray without ceasing and to feel a divine presence that is closer than our breathing, nearer than hands and feet. You know, a, a presence that we can feel dwelling within us and, and whispering in our heart, you know, abide in me, abide in me as I abide in you. You know, these things are deep truths known by masters over many, many millennia. So practice, practice, practice. And remember, this is God. This life is God. And so are you. So let's just move into a little practice around that. No, and we know that all there is is God and all these wonderful qualities and frequencies of the divine that I've been talking about this morning are in there. They are in God. They are in us because we are one with this divine presence. We are this divine presence. And so I speak my word for and about each and every person that is on this call and each and every person that is not. I speak my word for life, for all of life, all creatures, great and small, all of humanity. I speak my word for our beloved country that she rise up to experience and express the freedom that she was founded on. 
I, I speak my word for our beloved Mother Earth that we walk upon, that we love and care for her. I speak for peace. I speak for the peace of the divine to rise up, express through and express out into all, all corners and nooks and crannies of life where we least expect it. Peace rises, peace blooms, peace is. So for this, I'm just so grateful. I'm just so grateful. And that gratitude is creative and expansive. And ah, I just feel its frequency and resonance. Impacting law, impressing law. So from here, I just say thank you. I'm confident. I live in conviction. I know that all is well. And I release this prayer and invite you to signify your agreement by saying, and so it is. And so it is. You know what's really funny? <laughs> I was really tired today. <laughs> I went to my son's 50th birthday party dinner last night, and I didn't get home till 11, and that's for me is like super late. And I was thinking, oh, am I ever going to make it through the day? And as soon as I am in this community, in the richness and the connection of your presence and love, I just feel energized and everything just comes spilling out. So I want to thank you all for being so present and so just creating this rich, wonderful connection. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I have no idea who's doing the uh, conscious giving. Does anybody else remember? Like, oh, it's you, Relay. Really? Thank you. <laughs> All right, I will get that up for you. Here, hang on just a second. So this is our time to give to the One Heart, One Mind community. And as we feel this beautiful resonance of all the aspects of God, we can uh, give freely knowing that we receive so much. And Reverend Michelle's going to put up the little thing. So this is the One Heart, One Mind Venmo at One Heart, One Mind Center. And you look for Reverend Michelle's beautiful photo. And then we have the mailing address if you'd like to send a check right up there. And we very much are so grateful for all um, that you give monetarily. Thank you. And next Sacred giving. Everything flows from the nature of God's good. We give and receive from this flow in gratitude and love. We rest in the infinite giving nature of spirit and simply say, and so it is. And so it is. Oh, thank you, Relaine. And we'll come back to you in a second. Um, let's see, what do we have this week? We have our uh, prayer time on Monday. And we're going to kind of have a new focus this Monday. So we'll, I'll talk to you about it when we get there. It'll be wonderful. <laughs> You'll love it. Um, and then Tuesday, we're going to do chapter four of uh, Happy for No Reason. And I can't remember the name of the chapter right off the top of my head, but I've sent it out. So I know you guys all know. And if you didn't get it, just let me know and I'll resend it to you. And then there is no prayer this week. And then, of course, we have our Sunday service next week. So that's pretty much what we have as far as that. So let me come back to you, Relaine, and invite you to do the benediction. Oh, so I'm so grateful for being here this morning for uh, practitioner Lisa Lazaro being um, the practitioner of the day and and her words of wisdom and Reverend Michelle's words of wisdom, just the beautiful energies and the resonance that we feel this morning. It just feels that oneness and connection with God. And I just would like to take 30 seconds for all of us to feel that resonance of peace and love.
And I encourage all of us to continue feeling this, this resonance that we feel right now. We can feel that on our own because we're still connected. We're still one with spirit with each and every one of us in the one heart, one mind community. So let us just feel the gratitude, feel the love and the law in our life, in our day-to-day -day moments. So, so very grateful. And as I release this prayer into the law, know that it is all love and law, and all science and mind principles, which resonates out into everyone and everything and all universal principles, all connected, truly is one. And it is open at the top. And it all begins with us. How great is that? And so it is. Beautiful. Thank you, Relaine. That was beautiful. I love that. And that really felt peaceful when we did that 30 seconds. I was like, oh, this feels good. Thank you for that. That was perfect. And then I have um, one more song. And um, I've played this song before, but that's okay. It's a beautiful song. And and he talks about peace in here. And I thought, oh, that's just such a lovely, a lovely, lovely reminder. So let me go. Let me find it. Here it is. And I'm going to share the sound. Oh, wait, you know what? I'm just going to share the sound. I'm not going to share the screen because it's there's no video. It's just a it's just a song, but it's a lovely song. And this is uh, Gary Lynn Floyd. And um, and the name of the song, which I'm sure you remember, is um, I Wouldn't Be Surprised. So it's uh, just let it speak for itself. Wouldn't be surprised if peace broke out all over. I wouldn't be surprised if I found a four leaf clover. Cause miracles abound, they happen all around me every day. I wouldn't be surprised if we put an end to hunger. I wouldn't be surprised if we just kept getting younger Cause miracles abound, happen all around me every day And life keeps blessing me with so much good I wouldn't change it even if I could Blessing me in every way And if it all turns out okay I wouldn't be surprised I wouldn't be surprised at all I wouldn't be surprised if I found out every answer I won't be surprised when we find a cure for cancer Cause miracles abound, they happen all around me every day And life keeps blessing me with so much good I wouldn't change it even if I could Blessing me in every way And if it all turns out okay I wouldn't be surprised I wouldn't be surprised I wouldn't be surprised I wouldn't be surprised at all Oh, I wouldn't be surprised surprised at all life keeps blessing me with so much good I wouldn't change it even if I could blessing me in every way and if it all turns out okay I wouldn't be surprised I wouldn't be surprised at all
Life keeps blessing me With so much good I wouldn't change it even if I could Blessing me in every way And if it all turns out okay I wouldn't be surprised I wouldn't be surprised at all surprised I wouldn't be surprised at all <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised either <laughs> I would love it whatever if, if peace broke out all over so I just want to take this moment to to thank my my beautiful beloved friend Lisa for her invocation and her words. That was really wonderful. And Rob's benediction. Oh no, I'm sorry, it's Relaine's benediction. You're right by each other on my screen. Relaine, thank you for that. Thank you for that 30 second pause. And just I thank the rest of you for just being here. Your presence is just so appreciated, and and I love you all so much. So I'm going to go ahead and stop our recording now.